everyone, it's Debbie and I hope this finds you safe and well. And continuing our thoughts along the lines of biblical and social justice, just meditating on these scriptures. Psalm 82, 3, give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Isaiah 1, 17, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and please the widow's cause. And Luke 11:42. but woe to the Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God those you ought to have done without neglecting the others. So social injustice is a common term used today and a brief online search will uncover varying definitions about what it means. One definition says social justice is promoting a just society by challenging injustice and valuing diversity. On one hand, that sounds fine, but when we take a deeper look at this, it's rather vague and it can lead to many differing conclusions about what, what justice really looks like. In contrast to social justice, which focuses on the temporal view of addressing injustices in society, biblical justice starts with the eternal in mind. It starts by seeing people as God sees them, recognizing that we are all created in the image of God and it's the incumbent upon Christ followers to pursue physical and spiritual freedom for the oppressed. So others can also become what God created them to be. If we have experienced freedom in Christ, how can we not pursue freedom on behalf of others? And as the church, as a body of Christ, we may partner with those doing work of social justice in our communities, but let us not be confused about our ultimate mission. Our mission is not about picking up another cause because it sounds appealing and makes us look good. Our mission is about fully embracing the cause of Christ. The end goal of biblical justice is seeing lives reconciled to God and eternally transformed. So what can we do? One day there will be perfect justice carried out by a perfectly holy and just God. In the meantime, evil is pervasive throughout our world. Wickedness is on the increase, so it seems. Children are sold into sex slavery. Women are exploited. Men are forced to do things that are unjust. The poor are beaten and forced to work in terrible conditions without pay. Human trafficking or modern slavery continues in every country globally across this world. Every street, every town, every community, every city, every country. And there are more than 40.3 million slaves in the world today, more than at any other time in our history. So can we, the church, lead the way and pursue justice on behalf of the oppressed speak out on those without a voice, help to free those that have been trapped, the widows, the orphans and the enslaved. If we know the one who is completely just, should we not lead this battle? Should we not lead this charge? The answer should be a resolute yes, yes and amen. Fueled by the compassion of Christ, we engage in issues of injustice protecting the vulnerable, fighting for those held in bondage, fighting for those held in oppression, fighting to free those that have been enslaved, walking alongside the wounded, embracing the brokenhearted and pointing them to the one who heals, restores and redeems. Pursuing justice starts and continues with a foundation of prayer because we know it is his battle, not our own. It involves time, it involves sacrifice. It means stepping out of our comfort zone and persevering and enduring with patience. It means walking in wisdom, godly wisdom, and not jumping in spontaneously, haphazardly or foolishly. Our just God leads and we follow as he empowers us through the Holy Spirit. My question today is, are you ready? Let's go. Let's engage in the fight for biblical justice.